Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Sleeve Chef. My name is Michael Salomon. My beautiful wife, Mary, is behind the camera this evening. Uh, tonight, we will be preparing a <clears throat> shrimp scampi with zoodles. Uh, zoodles, in case you're unfamiliar, are zucchini noodles. Uh, we've got a super healthy, very delicious dish. Uh, getting ready to set up for this evening. It's going to be quick. It's going to be healthy. And it's going to be very easy to prepare. Uh, the cooking techniques we'll be using this evening, we will be sautéing, is the primary cooking technique. Uh, and we will also be creating zucchini noodles from zucchini. So, let's get cooking. First of all, we'll talk about our shrimp. Uh, we are using 2630 shrimp. Uh, when you hear the term 2630, what that refers to is the amount of shrimp you'll receive per pound. So, 1620s, you receive 16 to 20 shrimp per pound. 2125s, you receive 21 to 25 shrimp per pound. That usually determines the size of the shrimp. Obviously, the larger the shrimp, the less of them you'll be per pound. The smaller the shrimp, the more of them you'll receive per pound. I like 21, I like uh, 2630s here, because they're a good size. They're going to work well for our shrimp scampi dish. They're not going to be too large. We're not going to put too much involved as far as cost goes for those really big shrimp. Um, <clears throat> uh, they're not going to be popcorn shrimp either. Uh, popcorn shrimp are more uh, suited towards actual frying shrimp. Uh, or if you're looking to feed a lot more people. Um, <clears throat> so also one thing to note, we're going to be saving our shrimp shells here too. Uh, we're going to use our shrimp shells for a stock that we're going to make in a forthcoming episode of The Sleeve Chef. Uh, so, let's go ahead and start showing you how to actually prep the shrimp. You can see I prepped some shrimp ahead of time. We've got three shrimp here. Very simple. First, we're gonna go ahead and remove the legs. And then we'll remove the shells as well. So this is the act of peeling the shrimp. There'll be another step as well that we're gonna include in here, and that's deveining the shrimp. So we're good to go. Next, it's very important you would always make sure you use the appropriate knife for the appropriate task. Chef's knife, nine inches long, ideal for cutting all, and general utility. This is actually closer to a paring knife. It's a bit longer than a paring knife. It's actually a steak knife. But it's more of a, yeah, it's a steak knife. We have a, a paring knife. As opposed to a paring knife. This knife will work for our given operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our shrimp, we're going to cut right along the back of the shrimp here, and then you'll see these have already been done, but what will happen is there'll be that little black line in there, that's actually the intestinal tract of the shrimp, we just want to simply push that away and remove that from the shrimp. So one more time, we'll take our steak knife, or if you want to be more professional, use a paring knife, smaller, stubbier knife. Ideal for cutting something smaller like the shrimp. We want to take our take our knife, glide it right along once again, keeping our fingertips curled back, keeping our, as discussed before, keep our fingertips curled back, keeps us safe. We're just going to go right, slowly right along the back of the shrimp here, and then you'll remove, you can come through and you can remove the uh, intestinal tract of the shrimp, and that's what you want to see in the end. All right, so there's our shrimp. Again, wash my hands here. It's always very important. We don't want to cross <clears throat> We don't want to cross contaminate. So you always want to wash your hands after handling raw ingredients, like we did with our shrimp here. So, next up, let's go ahead and prep our garlic. Fresh garlic is always the way to go. I love fresh garlic. Uh, some stores, uh, you can find uh, Wegmans, uh, H Mart, Safeway. Safeway will sell uh, whole peeled cloves of garlic. That's how this is a head of garlic. This 
is a clove of garlic. So what we're going to do to break this down is we're going to take our head of garlic, we're going to sit it with the root side facing up, we're going to roll it in our hand, and we're just going to turn our hand and we're going to crush it, and you'll see these garlic cloves will actually break up and separate out. How many cloves of garlic are typically in a head of garlic? Uh, that's a good question. It can vary based on the size of the garlic itself. Uh, I've seen anywhere from 15 to 20 cloves of garlic. And on average, like how long can I keep garlic in my house before I should probably chuck it? Uh, that depends on whether or not you want to keep it covered. If you keep your garlic covered, garlic can last about two, three days. Um, if it's whole cloves of garlic like this and they have not been cut into, those will last considerably longer because the oxygen, oxygen is really the enemy of all food. Oxygen will start breaking down the, the, uh, uh, the, the molecularly of the uh, ingredient and start to oxidize it basically, which in turn will, will sour the ingredient and it'll lose some of its flavor and complexity. Let's go ahead and remove our excess garlic skins here. All right, next up. Now, clove of garlic, what we're gonna do very carefully is we're gonna take the heel of our hand, we're gonna put our piece of garlic under our chef knife here, and take our hand and just put a real quick thrusting motion and actually crush the garlic like so. So once again, we're gonna take our clove of garlic. We're going to take the heel of our hand, keep the garlic towards the back end of your knife, and we're just gonna go ahead and crush our garlic and we'll discard the excess skins here. Very important, you want to use the heel, the palm of your hand. You want to use right here on that knife. Don't want to press down with your fingertips. So once again, take our clove of garlic, palm of our hand, side of our knife, just crush the garlic. So how much garlic are you going to probably put in this? So uh, what's nice about garlic is a little bit of garlic tends to go a long way. So it's really up to you. I'm going to end up using about four or five cloves of garlic. If you're not a big fan of garlic and you want to back off a bit, that's perfectly fine. You can use two to three cloves of garlic. The primary thing I would recommend is using crushed garlic. I'm sorry, using fresh garlic. Not crushed garlic. As opposed to a powdered garlic. Or that weird jarred stuff. Here we go. We are, here's our garlic. Uh, once again, everybody, if you have any questions, mm -hmm. please feel free to chime in. All right, so we'll go ahead and clean off our cutting board real quick here. This is also very important. We wanna clean off our cutting board after using to help prevent any cross contaminants from actually getting into our garlic. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use a simple slicing motion so once again, fingertips tucked in. You want the side of the blade to come up against the edge of your middle finger, your middle knuckle. You're gonna use a slicing motion here. Then we're on our way to actually mince our garlic. So once again, We'll use that same rocking motion we used before. Very carefully clean off your knife. This is the more advanced technique. Once again, you'll see how I'm holding my knife. I'm holding it like I would a tennis racket. I'm using my fingers, the tips of my, the knuckles of my fingers here, of my non-dominant hand, to just rock my knife up and down along this garlic. So when we mince our garlic here, we want to make sure we get it nice and small. Periodically, we want to make sure you wipe off the side of your knife here. 
Remove any extra garlic pieces there. So I've got a question about the shrimp. Sure. If um, I go to the grocery store and the you know the the shrimp's not looking the freshest, can I use frozen shrimp? Uh, absolutely, you can most definitely use frozen shrimp uh, for this dish. Just make sure that you thaw it out uh, fully before cooking it. What's the best way to like thaw it out with? <clears throat> That's a great question. The best way to thaw your shrimp is to put it in a col put it in a bowl in the sink. Submerge it while it's still in the package. Submerge it, and then you want to just run cold water over it. That will be the fastest way to thaw out your shrimp. Now you may be thinking, why don't I just run hot water over it? Well, the problem with running hot water over is it, over it is it'll actually start to uh, cook the shrimp just a bit on the outside, which will end up impacting the final product. So this is what we're looking for for our minced garlic here. We've got nice small pieces of garlic. Go ahead and grab a plate here. Make a little room. And to scoop this off of our cutting board, we can use our hands. Or what we can do, we can use our knife with the blade pointing down very carefully. Just scoop. And very carefully with your finger. Slide it over onto, so you're almost using it like a wedge. You have an angle here, and this is scooping it right up onto the edge of your knife. There we are. All right, so we've got our minced garlic. Now we've got our zoodles here. Let's clean off my hand real quick. So you're going to demonstrate how to make zoodles by hand? Yes, I am. Awesome. For those of you wondering home, we have, it smells deliciously like garlic in here, and I'm pretty sure we could put off the entire cast of Twilight. <laughs> yeah, fresh, fresh garlic is going to make all the difference in your dishes. I always recommend using fresh garlic. Unless, of course, in our case, we've got that ginger garlic paste, and you'll see that's more up for applications where garlic isn't as present in the dish uh, versus our... <clears throat> Versus here, where shrimp scampi, naturally, the uh, uh, you would expect garlic to be in that dish. You can also buy just regular ginger paste at a lot of Indian grocery stores as well. Yeah. So if you want to be, like, super lazy, or time is not on your side, or if you're me, you can't chop or anything. It's a great way to, to it's, it's a great product. Great, 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 great product. So, we've got our zucchini squash here. We're going to go ahead... <clears throat> And take our, actually, real quick, I want to give a quick example here. Both of these are squashes. These this, are squashed as well. These are squashed as well. This is a zucchini squash. It's what's known as a summer squash. Also in this family are patapan squash and yellow squash. This guy is a spaghetti squash, also known as a winter squash. They're hardier, they're more robust. They're more firm. A pumpkin is also another type of squash. It's also in the squash family. Voila. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, tuck our fingertips in. Feel the side of the blade go right up against that middle finger knuckle. Slide straight down here. Just remove the tip of that zucchini. Same thing, just enough. So, we're going to do half of this by hand, we're going to do half of this using our julienne peeler. You can find julienne peelers at any common grocery store, Target will sell them, Kohl's will sell them. You'll see here they have ridges, they have sharp edges here, and that will actually help break up these, uh, this julienne here. So you'll see, as we, as we slowly work our way down the zucchini here, You'll see 
This is a very, very easy way of making zoodles. Very low cost way of making zoodles. Now keep in mind, you can also go out and purchase zoodles in a grocery store. You're going to find that by your, in the vegetable produce area. Yep. It's usually refrigerated. Depending on when you go, they are, they can range anywhere from like 3 to $6, depending on where the store and the amount that you're buying them in. All right, so we're about halfway through our zucchini. Now we'll show you the actual cutting by hand method. All right, so what I'm going to do here, this is more of an advanced technique, so I'm going to show you something different here. I'm going to take an edge off and round out the edges, spur off the edges here of our vegetable, right? So it sits flat. Once again, we don't want to remove too, too much of that vegetable. Need to round off one more edge here. There we go. Now, what we want to do is very carefully come right up the edge of that veg of the zucchini here. Now you'll notice these will be a little bit thicker than what we had before. But it's the same concept. So we're going to come back down here, we're going to julienne these. I like using these, these uh, julienne peelers because they have more uniformity for the cut. They're also great to use if you're like making a salad, you want to make it look extra fancy, you can use them like carrots and other vegetables. Exactly. And it just looks cooler. Helps to elevate the dish. Yeah. Elevate the dish. Put our zoodles over here. And keep in mind too, everybody, this is from two zucchini. Hope everybody's doing well out there tonight. Take a moment. Does anybody have any questions for us? I think people may still be stuck in traffic. All right, there we are. Now we are all set to actually go to our pan. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this excess zucchini. We are all set to go right to our pan here. So. You'll see here, we've got our plate all set. The order that we're going to add is we're going to go <clears throat> shrimp first. So we're going to add our extra virgin olive oil. We're going to add some Kerrygold butter. Why are you adding both olive oil and butter? Uh, it actually helps to up the fat content of the dish. And also, when you think shrimp scampi, you think butter uh, with your dish. So what's the great thing about Kerrygold butter? Butter versus other kinds of butter. Like so the great thing about Kerrygold butter versus traditional butter is Kerrygold butter is actually a bit more rich, so it has a higher fat content. So it's going to be a, a, a just provide an overall better product. So the best way to cook these shrimp, everybody, is you want to spread them out so they're sitting evenly throughout the pan. If I didn't want to cook it with shrimp, say it was, you know, I had maybe a shellfish allergy, or I was vegetarian, what could I substitute the shrimp with? Uh, you can use, if you've got a shellfish allergy, you can use uh, tofu is a great substitution for this dish. We've got a little salt and pepper here. About like portobello mushrooms. Uh, yeah, portobello mushrooms is another great substitution for this fish. 
You'll see here once again, when I'm adding my salt and pepper, I'm going high, allows me to get more coverage. Versus if I try to go low, you see I move my hand more, right? It's got to be more side to side, uh, side to side. All right. Here. Add some butter to our pan. So once again, guys, we're sautéing here. We're going over a low to medium heat. And you'll see periodically what I do here is I start moving my way through the pan, just making sure that all the shrimp are facing one way. They're all facing down. They've all made contact with the pan. It smells really good in here, for those of you wondering. All right. So I'm sure everybody has seen a fully cooked shrimp before. You'll see shrimp have that sort of purple hue to them when they're raw. You can see evidence by the opposite side here, the shrimp. So how long do these shrimp take to typically take the cut? So these shrimp typically take about three to five minutes to fully cook. It's going to be about two and a half minutes, to two and a half to three minutes on one side and two and a half to three minutes on the other side. And that's mostly because we're going into low to medium heat here. We're sauteing our shrimp. One thing about sauteing is sauteing requires a little bit of patience too because you notice I'm not trying to fuss too much with the pan here. I'm just letting it cook. There's no need. The more you fuss with it, the longer it's going to take it to cook. I wanted to get it evenly spread out first to make sure all each shrimp has got the surface touching the pan. After that, I'm just going to leave it alone. So you can see our shrimp are starting to slowly cook here. I'm going to take them and flip them over. Very methodically going one by one here. Our sous chef Frida and Stout are in the building. Oh, they just exited. They're here to assist. They're here to clean up. They're here to clean up. Anna Newman says she wished her husband could eat shrimp because this looks awesome. Who said that? Anna Newman. Uh, hi, Anna. How are you? <clears throat> so what you'll notice here, everybody, is we're going to go ahead and I'm waiting to add the garlic to this dish. The reason I'm waiting to add the garlic is that the shrimp take longer to cook than the garlic. So if I add the garlic first, the garlic will end up overcooking and it'll end up burning. Very important lesson, when you burn garlic, stop, throw it out, clean out your pan, start over again. 
burnt garlic, you cannot get rid of that flavor, and it's going to ruin your entire dish if you continue to use it. If you think your garlic's burnt, throw it out, stop what you're doing, throw it out, start clean out your pan, and start over. Hmm? Is it oh, right. So does anybody have any questions about what we've done thus far? Frida, do you have questions? Frida's like, where's that good smell coming from? I'll be right back. If you guys have any questions for Mike or suggestions or things you'd like to see him make, feel free to ask. Uh, send us an email at thesleevechef at gmail.com. Check out our Instagram page, Sleeve Chef, Sleeve Chef in MD. Uh, we're going to be posting a lot more pictures of food that Mike makes, food that we enjoy, all that good stuff. All right, now we're getting some water. So here's that color we're looking for. See this shrimp here? This is what we're looking for, everybody. That's the color you want. Right there. A little browning from that Maillard reaction that we talked about before, the browning of the proteins of the dish, of the shrimp. That's what we're looking for here. It's going to add some more complexity to the dish, to the flavor of the shrimp. It's going to add some texture too. Add our garlic in here. Get everything mixed around. Now it's really starting to smell good, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and remove our shrimp from the pan. One of my favorite, favorite smells in the kitchen is cooking garlic. My garlic starts to perfume. It'll start to, you'll smell it throughout the house. One of my favorite, favorite smells is fresh garlic being sauteed. All right. So now we've got our garlic here. It's starting to perfume. We'll grab our zoodles. The zoodles will take very, very short period of time to cook, everybody. So once again, we're just going to spread those out in our pan. We're going to add a bit more salt and pepper here. Once again, we're going to go high. Right up around our dish. There we are. A little bit of pepper, coarse ground pepper and kosher salt. Now keep in mind too that you're going to get some water that's going to come out of the zucchini here. So you'll see as I start to move these zucchini around, they'll start to separate. But add a little bit more fat to this pan too.
And what you're looking for when you're cooking zucchini noodles, zoodles, is you want them to wilt <clears throat> just like pasta would. The key thing is, is you can't cook them like pasta because they're not a carbohydrate. You don't have that texture to stand up to that to boiling first. So you never want to boil your zoodle. You always was, you want to saute them, or another method you can use is steaming them. But you see here, these don't take long to cook. They're really healthy. They're very flavorful. You want to cook your zoodles for about two to three minutes at the most. Just until they soft, just until they're soft and tender. So we have a medium heat here. We're sautéing our zoodles. We're sautéing our garlic. If I was in a, if I was in a traditional kitchen, I would have separated these two out. primary reason for that is that I don't know if somebody at the table has a seafood allergy. <clears throat> I know both my wife and myself don't have seafood allergies because I know I'm serving shrimp. So by, by, that's why I decided to reuse our pan here. So if we stop for a second here, this is what we're looking for. Take a quick shove in there, honey. See how our zoodles, see how our zoodles have slowly begun to wilt just a bit and lose some of their form. That's what you're looking for. Now we're ready to stop and serve. We'll go ahead and kill the heat. I'm going to add our shrimp, about half of our shrimp back into the pan. Wow, oh, this looks so good. All right. Add that back into the pan. Nice and bright. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of those zoodles, ball them up, and sit them right in the middle of the plate here to give them a quick little twist. And there we are, like so. Take some of our shrimp, they're going to go right on top of our zoodles. Same thing on our other plate. Really want to focus on centering. We'll be talking a bit more about plating later on. Oh, this looks delicious. shrimps on here. You'll notice here as well everybody I'm using smaller plates. The nice thing about using smaller plates is that it, it perceptually it looks like less food so it's going to force you to eat less. So now I forgot to do this last episode. I'm not going to forget to do this again. The reveal, the delicious try. I don't think we have clean forks. We've got a fork out of this washer here. One for my love, and one for myself. Here we go, honey. Let's grab a little bit of our zoodles here. We've got a little bit. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Delicious. Got the garlicky. Got the garlic coming through. 
some great texture on our shrimp. Our zoodles are cooked al dente, so we still have to, uh, a bit of a bite to it. Not a lot, but just a bit of a bite. So, for dinner this evening, we prepared... Oh, your brother Jim wants to know what the texture of the zoodle is like. Is it like a sautéed onion or more like noodles? Um, that's a great question, Jim. It's a little bit more... I would compare it to like an al dente pasta noodle, to be honest. Al dente pasta uh, is pasta that's cooked to, to a bite. It's got a little bite left in it. To get a little bit of bite, that's really soft. That's what you want to shoot for. So, this evening, <clears throat> we prepared shrimp scampi, sautéed shrimp scampi uh, with zoodles. Zoodles are zucchini noodles. Zucchini is a summer squash versus like a spaghetti squash. It's a winter squash. This is a very light, healthy dish. Once again, my name is Michael Salomon. I am the sleeve chef. My beautiful wife Mary was behind the camera. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Please send your suggestions and comments to either the Sleeve Chef Facebook page. You can find us on Instagram. At Sleeve Chef in MD. At Sleeve Chef in, in MD. And you can also find us, we have a website coming up soon. Send uh, us an email. And then the email is the Sleeve Chef, all one word, all lowercase, at gmail.com. Thank you very much for tuning in once again, everyone. My name is Michael Salmon. I am the Sleeve Chef. Bon appetit. Good night.